Welcome ladies and gentlemen, what's up, Nevarius here, welcome to a new Let's Play. Today we start with Frostpunk, a game that came out in 2018, developed by 11-Bit Studios uh, for Microsoft Windows and will be released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One in 2019, summer 2019, sometimes during that period. And it is probably one of my all-time favorite games that I've ever played. So I played it like over 70 hours when it came out. I was totally addicted to it. It has beautiful graphics, a beautiful setting, very depressing setting though. It has tight game mechanics, really, really good and well thought out. Um, and it's probably one of, of my all-time simulation building strategy games of all time, so just on par with Anno and Age of Empires, and we're going to play this one now in a new Let's Play. Um, we're starting with the first scenarios, we're here in the select scenario screen right now, and we can choose new home, the arcs, the refugees, the follow-up winter home. Four scenarios, they all play quite differently, and we will see them all at some point. Um, right now in this Let's Play, we focus on new home scenario, and if you're interested in that, we can also have an endless mode where we can see how long we can survive, how many days. And a new home is the standard scenario, so the first one that also came out last year um, on, on release day. And in this one here we have to preserve civilization from the chaos of its own downfall. We have fled to the end of the world, we will have to adapt to survive. Who will we become in the process? Right, we could choose now to customize the settings here to extreme for example. Um, or we choose the hardest difficulty possible, the survivor mode. In survivor mode, the against all odds. There is no active pause, the game will be very difficult and your progress will be saved on exit only. And that also means I can't quick save. If I screw up on day 10, for example, I lose all my progress. So I have to start over. Um, so hopefully we don't have to do that. I've played this scenario once on survivor um, and succeeded after several tries, but it's been a while and hopefully we can do it without any problems, though it's going to be difficult for sure. And without further ado, I hope you are going to enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the ride. And without further ado, see you on the other side. We roam the still, cold world. No horizon in sight. The rulers of old, stripped, pride and glory. It feels as yesterday we were turning the wheels of progress. Until the frost stopped it all. Suddenly, without a warning. When tides had changed, they changed for all of us, no matter wealth or class. We've lost our world to snow. And with it, our last traces of humanity. We bid farewell to plenty. And for those who remained, came the time to adapt. We decided to leave our homes and head north. We roamed for weeks, maybe months, leaving behind all the things we once believed had made us. It was hope that pushed us forward. Slowly, step by step, we knew the cost of our journey, and we paid the price a hundred times. Finally, the time has come to build the last city on Earth. A new home. We fled from London and crossed the sea to reach the frozen north. On the way our convoy was hit by a blizzard and scattered. A handful of us managed to reach the site of this generator, only to find it frozen solid and abandoned. Why is no one here? 
Did any of our people survive the blizzard? Are there any others out there? Whatever we do, we should expect the worst now that the world, as we know, it has crumbled. And here we are in the crater that is going to be our home for quite some time. Day one has started. Fight the cold. We need to get the get generator working. It provides heat and power to other buildings. Without it, we'll freeze to death. Stockpile some coal and start the generator. Our very first mission, start the generator. We are somewhat like a few survivors now. And we have to start this whole thing here from scratch. And that's what we are going to do in the hope of survival. What I'm doing right now is a bit predefined. So I know how or what I should do for now. In the beginning, it's very crucial that you start with the right elements. Otherwise, you just lose. So what I'm doing right now is I'm assigning some of my people here now to the right places. And I think we need a bit more steel. So we are here now in the crater and we have some resources here. That's all we have, nothing else. We have some coal piles here, two of them here, two here, one here. We have wood piles, two here and two here. And we have steel, two, one here and one here and one here. That's all we have and with that we have to start a new city. Right now we have to choose a law. So in Frostpunk you can choose laws every 18 hours, every 24 hours, every 36 hours. It depends on what law you choose. And here we have our options now. We could choose to build a fight arena. We could choose to supply our people with soup. We could choose to have radical treatment so people can be amputated. We can choose to have a corpse disposal so people are going to be buried in the snow or a cemetery where they're properly being buried. Each one of those choices has consequences. We can choose to have child labor or we could choose to have child shelters so people or children don't have to work. And we can choose the emergency shift so people have to work through the night. And for now, we're going to choose that. Emergency shift. Sometimes we have to concentrate on the task at hand at the cost of everything else or die. And we get the new ability. You can force workers in any facility to work for the next 24 hours. This content will rise slightly. Okay, so that's the beginning. And with that, we can't do anything anymore for now. We just have to wait. We can see how, what our workers say. Work, work, work until you die. 24 hours on the job. Insane, but that's a lot. And we can also click on them and see what they're saying. They all have a name. We can see what their health is, what the status is, where they're living, where they're working, who their children are, their spouse, their parents, what they're doing right now, and what is their biggest concern. So each one of them has their own problems, their own history, and each one of them is going to die with us or live with us. It depends on the decisions we make ahead. Right now, people are trying to get resources from the stockpiles that are surrounded by this generator that has exploded or something happened for some reasons we have some resources in the crater we have 80 homeless people so the people that are in this crater with us 80 of them will see what happens next we have chosen a new law so we have 16 hours cooldown on that now and that's it for now we could build something we have a building menu with a few a, mon a menu with a few options here nothing at the moment though that we need to build right now we need to wait a bit to collect some goods here the generator is not on yet and we have minus 20 degrees celsius as we can see on the weather forecast day one we cannot pause the game and we're going to day three four and on the fourth day the temperature is going to drop by two levels so to minus 40 degrees a level is always 10 degrees up or down it is now 14 o'clock, 15 o'clock almost. And yet, nothing happened, only that we collect some goods. We do have a quest, fight the cold, stockpile some coal and turn the generator on. We're not doing that now because we want to collect some coal first. And here is our stockpiles where people can store the goods that we have. Our people will work until 18 o'clock and then we'll, they will start to go to the generator and, you know, sleep, eat, 
whatever. Right now they cannot do both of them because we don't have any shelters and we don't have any food. And that's not going to change in the first night. It is now 16 o'clock. The sun is starting to go down. As you can see on the shadows, the shadows are getting longer. And the night is dark and full of terrors. I'm still hesitant to turn the generator on. We don't have enough coal yet. I could do that now by clicking on this one here, but I'm not doing it yet. It is almost 18 o'clock now. We do have some wood, some steel. Not enough though. And it's getting 18 o'clock now. Our people will now stop working. That is the reason for me, or that is the time now to build. So people need to build in the evening and night and gather stuff in the day. We start with a medical tent because people are going to get sick. And we are also going for the tech and build a workshop where we can research new technologies. And I'm going to build it over here behind the stockpiles. One of our people says no roof, roof over our heads. The captain, people are understandably concerned about the lack of shelter. They're f falling ill from sleeping outside in this terrible cold. We'd better do something about it. And I have three choices now. I'll provide some shelter. I'll provide shelter for everyone. And I won't address this right now. Each one of those decisions has drastic consequences like with every quest in this game. If I provide shelter, if I promise that, I have two days to make that promise. Otherwise, my people are going to riot. I'll provide shelter for everyone, for all the 80 people. That has harsh consequences if I don't follow that one. And I won't address this right now. Discontent will rise. I say I'll provide some shelter now. So an easy promise, I know. We do have the medical tent, the workshop. They're building, uh, being now constructed, as we can see. The generator is still not on. And I'm going to leave it off for a few more minutes. So we have those things here. What else could we do? We could build the gather post. So people working right now in the stockpiles are totally exposed to the cold. So we want to get them a shelter during day when they work in those conditions. So we're going to have a gathering post here. And we're also going to have a gathering post where the coal is here. And we built the streets from there to the center. So with those streets... People can then walk over it, you know, without going through the snow. And as you can see, the snow is very, very thick. It's getting darker now and colder. We are at 8 o'clock. The wisdom of the crowd. Captain, when facing demands, remember this. People usually look for the quickest solution, not the best one. You don't have to agree to everything they ask for. If you fix the problem your way, it's fine. That was just a tip from him. The medical post is soon finished. So I'm going to reassign two engineers to the medical post. We have workers and engineers, two working classes. Each one of them has their own specializations. Engineers are good in the medical post and researching stuff. Workers are good in the mines, gathering stuff and everything else. The heating is still off. My people tell me. I'm going to assign two engineers here now. And I'm also going to assign two engineers to the workshop and the workshop is going to have an emergency shift working through the night and we start with the first one what should be the first one we have lots of research options as you can see the technology tree heating exploration resources food and health and shelter each one of them offers significant advantages that we need but excludes the other ones because of time so we have the first tier here now steam hub heaters the beacon, which allows us to have scouts, where we can scout the area around it. The resources, where we have new buildings and faster gathering, for example, so my people can gather resources faster. And we have food, health and shelter. For example, the hunter's gear. Hunting is easier, people have better gear to get food. For the first night, we are going for the beacon. In my opinion, there are different ways how we do that, how everyone is approaching it. And we're doing it now this way. It is now 10 o'clock. What I'm doing now, I'm turning the generator on. And as you can see, the heat is coming out of it. We have opened the generator. The snow is melting in its surrounding. People are gathering around it. 
just enjoying some warmth for now. Very nice. Everything's working right as it should. The gathering post is now finished. This one here. So we are going to say off you go. Yeah, people working in the stockpiles, the wood crates, just go to the gathering post now. And there you can work. And they have a work shift from 8 o'clock to 18 o'clock. And at this time they're going to gather resources in its vicinity. The same applies for the gathering post here with the coals. Let's assign 10 workers to that one here as well. We still have some wood and I still have some time during the night. So what we're doing is we are building, I think we're going to build a cookhouse. So in the cookhouse we can, you know, build uh, or cook food from raw food and that would provide food rations. How much does it cost? 20 wood, that's a lot. We could also have a hunter's hut instead. That is something I prefer very much to that. So we're going to have a hunter's hut and we're going to build it somewhere here far away from the city. I think behind that shelter, uh, that gathering post is a good solution. And it also needs a street. Okay, because right now we have only raw food. And we need cooked food for our people so they can eat something. Right, nothing else is happening. Our people are now just enjoying a warm night without any shelter though. But at least they have some warmth. Family torn apart. Sir, a woman came forward after we built the workshop. She said that her husband and daughter didn't reach the city with their main group. But she's sure they're still out there. She wants to join the first scout team we'll send out. She urges you to hurry. Okay, there might be some survivors in the surrounding area. We need to get those scouts out quickly and find them. It's not past midnight, people are not building anything anymore, so they're trying to sleep. Where are they sleeping? Well, here in the open with minus 20 degrees, as you can see. And nothing to eat right now. I'm going to re reassign those people working the coal pile, so no one should be working in the open anymore. We have some in the gathering post. We are going to have some in the hunter's hut and in the scattering post here. So they can still work in those wood crates because we need a lot of wood. It's so, so important in the very first days. And we're also going to have some in the steel rackets here. I'm going to leave four unassigned right now to build, to finish building the hunter's hut and the gathering post then once we have the resources for that. And a new law can now be introduced as well. The cooldown is off. We have all those options again. I want to go past emergency shift. So up here, we can have the extended shift. So people can now work 18 hours a day. Okay, not, I think, 12 anymore, but 18 hours. And that they are now extended work day and facility 14 hours. And working overtime. Oh, okay, facility 14 hours. Okay, so this is the cooldown that I have after signing this law. This content, of course, will rise. But we do that. People need to work harder now. And I can now extend the work shifts of those posts here to, to, from 6 to 8 o'clock. And as you can see, my discontent bar rises. If that reaches its maximum, people will start to riot. And I get a cooldown of two days. And if I don't lower the discontent again... However, I could do that if I don't lower that. I get kicked out of the game and have to start over. The same goes for hope. Hope should not reach zero. If that happens, I get the same ultimatum and have to do and have to raise the hope bar again. Or otherwise I get kicked out of the game. So it's a very careful balancing between all my resources and my discontent and hope bar. Up here you can see my resources, coal, wood, steel, and steam cores, raw food, which is then being processed to food rations. I don't have any of them yet. So now the gathering post. First pe people start to finish the hunter's hut. Let's stop that for now because there's no need for it right now. And people should really start of finishing that street here. And I think I did a mistake here. Yeah, I need to finish the street here as well. This is going to hurt me a bit. 
And I hope we can somehow manage to do that again. As I said again, the slightest mistake in the first few days leads to death. And I can't allow any mistakes right now. Day 2 has dawned. Now the street is connected and the gathering post is working as intended. And I'm also going to shut down the generator once again. So we don't consume any coal for now. I've shut it down now, so it's still running a bit on heat. There's still some heat level here as you can see, but it's going it's getting smaller. This one here, this radius here is getting smaller now, and the snow is coming back. We have now two gathering posts up and running and the other people are working in those crates and steel wreckages. On this day I will need a lot of wood, so we definitely have to get as much wood out there as possible, which we're doing right now. Generator is shutting down, heat levels are going down as well, but during daytime it doesn't matter that much. Okay, we have still 80 homeless people and we have 6 sick people and 5 being treated. So my sick, is, my sick rate is going up now. The cold, the hunger... It sickens people, literally, and... We need more medical posts then as well. It is past midday now. Our people are working till 8 o'clock this day. And according to plan, I should reach the beacon on this very day and can build it then. Having the beacon on day 2 is quite important since you can then send out scouts. And they bring back survivors and rations and resources and quests as well. The heating is off now completely. And with reaching zero levels now the heating is off again and going to be turned down then during the night. And we're coming back here in the next episode and see how we fare.